What's up, everybody? We're back to Resort World Las Vegas, one of the newest casinos around. It opened on June 24th, so it's a casino that has less than a year. Since the beginning, I saw a lot of potential in this room. The casino is great, the staff is great, tables are brand new. I also loved the field. Out of the 28 sessions I played here, mostly were sessions that I played 1-3. And I felt the field was really soft, but it is worth mentioning that those opinions are based on my personal experience at the place. And you can go to Resort World and have a whole different experience and have a different opinion. It's possible to happen and I highly recommend you to go there and check it out for yourself. Welcome to the Poker Profit channel, the first poker vlog created to help you become a better poker player. I buy in for 400, we will start this session playing 1-3, first hand I'm on the button, with pocket sixes, hijack limps, I'm gonna raise, I raise to 16, pocket sixes is a hand that is flipping against many other hands, so that's partly why I raise a little bigger than usual, and I won't mind if he calls or if he folds, he folds and we win this hand. Next hand I'm in the cutoff with ace queen offsuit, one limper again from the low jack, I raise to 15, button and limper call so three players see the flop, flop comes 8, 10, queen, rainbow, I got top pair, top kicker, but I'm still losing to a reasonable amount of hands like queen 8 suited, queen 10 suited, 10 8 suited, jack 9 suited, that they both can have in their ranges, but most likely I'm winning this hand, and now the limper leads out for $20, and as there's no flush draw in this board, and I'm losing for a couple hands I just mentioned, I lean towards calling more than raising here, so that's what I do, I call, button folds, we go heads up to the turn, which comes a 6 of hearts, 7-9 gets there, but I don't see so many 7-9 in Limper's range. He bets again, now $20, and now I consider raising, but my reasoning is pretty similar than in the flop. I decide to call again and analyze the river. River is a blank, a 5 of spades, now he leads again for $20, and now it's pretty clear to me that he has a medium strength hand, trying to extract thin value. And I have a hand that I'll mostly be winning here. I just got to this table, but by the way he was dressed, his bet sizings and the way he behaved, I'm pretty confident he is a recreational. One thing I need to be careful here is if I raise, will he be able to transform his hand into a bluff? I don't think so. So if I raise here and he re-raises, I'm gonna fold. So that's what I do. I re-raise to $65. He calls, I show the ace queen. He mugs and I win the hand. Next hand I'm in the early position with queen 10 suited, under the gun limps, I raise to 15, only under the gun calls so we go heads up to the flop, which is one that I smash it, 8-9 jack rainbow, I flop the nut straight, limper leads to $18, and I don't wanna scare him away, I'm in position and I have control of the hand. So I decide to call and see the turn, unfortunately the turn is a 10 of diamonds, so now it's way easier to have a straight. He leads again to $25, I believe a call or a raise are both fine plays, sometimes I'm gonna raise, sometimes I'm gonna call, effective stack is 200, so this time I decided to call, River is another 8, he bets 25 again, and I'm really curious with what he has, you know, leading out those sizes post flop. The vast majority of the times, I'm gonna raise here on the river. Actually, I'm gonna raise in the flop in the turn as well. But by the way I played, and by the run out in the turn and river, I decided to call and see what he's got. And he actually had one of the few hands that makes my play be really bad. Because in the turn, he had a reasonable amount of equity against me. And if I raise, he would probably call. Straight, straight. But I don't want to be result oriented as well, he could have many other hands in his range that he was just crushed by me, but in this situation he wasn't, he had 9 outs in the river to win the hand and 3 outs to chop, this gives him an equity of around 20% in the turn, so I lost some value in the turn and also in the river, cause maybe if I raise the river he's gonna call, 17 minutes of game, winning little more than $200, and there was a table, a 2-5 table, that 2 vloggers were playing. I know both of them, one of them is my friend Harry B, another is Kyle Fitchell that I just met, and I decided to come to this table and make an interesting vlog for the channel. So that's what I did, right after I sat down 
Woman in position to get out of the table. So I've chosen to go to her spot to get a better table footage. And let's go. First thing I'm in the hijack, which was also under the gun plus one, because we were playing six handed. I see ace 10 offsuit. Under the gun raises to 20. And ace 10 offsuit here is not a good hand to flat. I'm gonna either three bet or fold. And this time I decided to fold. Next hand I'm in the hijack again. Under the gun limps. Low jack raises 25. I decide to flat and see a flop in position. And then under the gun call raises to 155. Call raising usually represents a lot of strength. If I call the nines here, I could be running against ace king, ace queen, but mostly I'm gonna be calling to set mine here. So I decide to fold and go to the next hand. Next hand I'm on the button with king four offsuit. It falls to me and I decide to open fold. There's one thing that is worth mentioning here. You can always use your image at the table you are playing in. So let's say your image is of an aggressive guy. Right in this moment, you can use your image by being tighter. At the same time, if your image is of a tight guy, you can use your image by being more aggressive. So I'm just calling, folding, calling, folding so far. And I always try to be self-aware of what's my image at the table and how can I use that in my favor. And I highly recommend you to do the same. Most of the times, when I see King 4 offsuit on the button and it falls to me and I'm right in the beginning of my sessions, I'm gonna tend to raise and play aggressively post-flop because that's part of my strategy to build a loose image for myself. But as I'm going the opposite way in folding more than I usually fold, I know that in the future, I can use this image of a tighter guy in my favor in this table. So you should always be self-aware about that, about what does the players think about you, how do they think you play, and how can you take advantage of this. The exact next hand, I got queen jack offsuit from the cutoff, hijack raises to 20, I decide to 3 bet to 65, button calls, which is not good, he is in position against me, and in case he is a good player, his range will mostly be of good hands, some suited connectors as well, many pocket pairs, some king queen suited, king jack suited, queen jack suited, 10 jack suited, hijack calls as well, so 3 players see the flop, flop comes ace 9 7 rainbow, I miss it completely, but I got many ace king, ace queen, ace jack in my range. So when hijack checks to me, I decide to see bet 75, little more than a third of the pot. Both of them call, so now I'm pretty much giving up on this hand. Turns another 9, he checks to me, I decide to check, button goes all in, and we both fold. I buy him for 100 more, winning $48 so far. Next hand I'm in the early position with king jack offsuit, I raise to 20, low jack and big blind call so 3 players see the flop, flop comes ace 9 7 again, again I got all the best aces here like ace king, ace queen, ace jack, low jack doesn't, big blind doesn't as well, so I'm gonna see bet, I see bet $20, a third of the pot, in case they call I know I can still bomb the turn and win the hand. So even if they call a relevant amount of times, I know I can still win this spot a relevant amount of times in the turn. Only low jack calls, we go heads up to the turn, which comes a 5 of diamonds, and now I'm gonna bet again, I bet 65, around 2 thirds of the pot, but now he thinks 65 is not enough. He re-raises to $155, and here I got no option besides folding, and that's what I do, I fold. Next hand I'm on the big blind with 10-9 suited, Kyle straddles from the button, under the gun limps. This guy seems to be a pretty loose guy who likes to see a lot of flops. Kyle checks, I complete, we go three ways to the flop, which comes queen 9-7 with one diamond. I got a middle pair and a couple runner runner straight and flush draw possibilities. Under the gun bets 25, I'm gonna call at least once here. Turns the 7 of hearts, it pairs the board, I check again. Now under the gun bets 25 again, really small bet, I'm gonna call here and analyze a river. River comes a 3 of hearts, a flush draw in the turn gets there, I check, he bets 100 and now I'm gonna fold, he shows queen 7 suited, that's why he limped preflop from under the gun, so that's a pretty good showdown to see. I buy him for 100 more, losing $75 so far. Next hand I'm in the low jack with pocket 9s, I raise to 20, hijack calls, Cut off 3 bets to 65, Kyle calls from the small blind, and now he makes my decision pretty easy. I gotta call 45 for a pot that has 175, I got great odds to set mine, also player in my left will most likely call as well. So I call, hijack calls as well, so we go 4 weights to the flop, which is not a bad one, 
Jack 76, all hearts. I got a pair and a nine high flush draw. We all check. Turn is great. Now I got a nine high flush, but I don't see a lot of value into betting, especially in a four way pot. But I actually have a great hand to bluff catch. I'm losing two, three cards in the deck that they could have, but there's a relevant likelihood they don't. But I still think it's a better play to check call instead of betting for value. So I check. Everybody checks again. River is a complete blank. A deuce of clubs, doesn't change nothing. And my reasoning is similar than in the turn. I'm gonna check and call for any bet. Everybody checks, I show the nines, and it's good. One hour and 36 minutes of game, winning $62. Next hand, I'm on the button with ace queen offsuit, under the gun limps, hijack raises 20, hijack is Kyle. I three bet to 65, pretty standard play here. They all fold and I win the hand. Next hand, I got ace jack offsuit from the big blind. Harry raises to $20 from the cutoff. Kyle calls, and I realize Kyle seems to have a pretty wider flat calling in position range. Ace Jack, I think, is crushing his range here. The question is, what is Harry B's range as well? I already played him a couple of times. He's pretty aggressive, so I feel like Ace Jack offsuit is mostly ahead of his range opening up from the cutoff as well. So I decide to 3 bet from the big line. I re raise to 120. Effective stack is mine of 650. They both fold and I win the hand. <laughs> Next and last hand of this episode is really interesting. I got ace 5 suited from the early position. I raised to 20. Harry B in the button calls. And now Kyle re raises me to $85. This re raise from him represents a lot of strength. He is vlogging as well. I 3 better him a couple of times. I know he's capable of doing that with a wider range and I know ace 5 is a great hand to balance my 4 betting range. If I had aces here, kings, queens, I would 4 bet pretty much 100% of the times because if I just flat here, I'm gonna allow Harry to flat from the button with a lot of hands. So instead of calling the 85, which I'm not a big fan, I decided to 4 bet. My stack is 750, I decided to 4 bet him to $230. Kyle quickly calls, as you guys can see. And then the flop comes queen, five, four, with one heart. Kyle checks, and here I'm pretty confident I should bet. The question is how much? I got 520 left in my stack. I decide to see bet one third of the pot, 165. Kyle quickly shoves all in, and then I realized his stack has a little less than I do. He was mostly player with a thousand dollars, but I think he lost a couple hands and he was playing shorter stacked. And now I put myself in a pretty tough decision. Cause as I see better at 165, I gotta call 329 for a pot that has 1,146 for my call to be profitable. My average equity has to be little less than 25%. And I believe I will be. Unless he has aces or ace queen, that he could have a couple of times, but he will also have sometimes king queen, queen jack, kings, maybe even jacks he plays like that. So now I think I made a mistake of putting myself committed to the pot when I bet 165. So after thinking for a long time, I was pretty confident I had more than 23, 24% of equity in this spot, and that's what I needed. So I decided to call. He says he has king queen, which as you guys can see, my equity is 24.55%. So in this particular spot, my call is profitable, but pretty close to break even. I missed the turn in river and he's good. What's up everybody? Interesting hand for you guys. If you're not familiar with this solver, this is Odin, one of the most popular solvers in the market. And it was so interesting that I really think it was a good idea to solve this hand with Odin and also solve with a friend of mine, Pedro Higo. He also has a poker vlog and he's someone I trust to, we study a lot together and we try to improve together. And that's a great way to improve, like talking to people that know things that you don't, that have qualities that you want to have modeling other people that you think that do something right. So this is Pedro Higo, he has a poker vlog, if you guys want to check it out. And uh, I want to hear his, his opinion about the hand, and let's go. Uh, 
I think there's two main points about the hand. One is the four batting preflop. Uh, when it's a pot motorway, your four batting bluffing, quote unquote, range, it's going to have a lot of hands that uh, the blockers are going to play, play, a, play a bigger role in it. For example, here we're using Odin to, uh, to analyze it. And uh, of course, it's not the exact sizes, but you can compensate that with, uh, with the fact that this is taking into consideration an uh, environment that has less rake. But it, as you can see here, your four batting bluff would have hands like ace jack suited or ace queen off, like blockers or king queen suited. Blockers play a very big role when you're boot away. And ace five suited is not a bad hand to four bet as a bluff heads up. But as you can see, multi way it, it loses its value. As you can see, the solver works with frequencies. Sometimes you will do 100% of the time something like those hands in blue that are clear folds. But other times he will do a mixing of two or three things. For example, the ace five suited is a four bet to 25 big blinds 7% of the times, a call 30% of the time, and this hand will mainly fold to Kyle's three bet. While ace jack suited, for example, will four bet 44% of the times and call 56% of the times. Ace queen off suit, for example, will four bet 26% of the time and fold 74% of the times. King queen suited with four bet 39% of the times and call 61. And as you can see, most hands that the solver says to four bet more have blockers that Kyle Fischel had. Actually, the solver strategy fits totally against the hand that Kyle had at that moment. Because when I have king queen and ace queen, for example, I'm blocking the queen of diamonds that Kyle has in his range. So if I had one of those hands, the likelihood that Kyle had king queen suited would be lower. Just, just a just as a uh, as education purpose, let's do the same thing, but let's take out uh, Harry B from the situation. Take out the button. Uh, as you can see here, it it changes, it shifts a lot the type of hand that you're gonna four bet. You see that it's like Ace Five suited becomes more interesting. It's still four bets in a high frequency Ace Jack suited, but it, you see that it's way more. Uh, it, it tends to four bet more with ace jack suited when it's moved away and ace five suited really want to four bet now it's for betting 30 percent of the time apart from i think it was like seven percent before mm -hmm. so having an extra player really affects the game even though his range is super capped because he's flatting from the bottom he's never gonna mm -hmm. have ace king or kings or aces etc uh and the second part of the hand i think is uh when you decide to see bet small let me just put it back uh, you can see here, let me just adjust. You can see here that the solver want to see bet very, very small. The solver see bet range will also work with frequencies. As you can see, the solver checks in a really low frequency of 2.7%. The rest, the solver bets. 5% of the times, the solver see bets 10% of the pot. 57% of the times, 25% of the pot. And 34% of the times, 33% of the pot. That, that's what I did. But I personally think I should have Seabat smaller. Something like 20%. Like you want to see bet 25% of the pot because it's a dry board. It's a far bet pot. Like it's, you don't need to bet a lot because you're going to have even your, a lot of your bluffs here are going to be like king, queen suited, ace, queen off. You're, you're going to hit this board hard, right? Even with your bluffs. So... I think you could go smaller, but once you go one third and he jams, this is something interesting as well. You see that the solver, even in this pot that you're, uh, you have less blinds than the actual hand, the solver never wanna wanna jam. He wanna do it in a very low frequency, like two point five percent of the time. No. Huh? You wanna jam? You're talking about me, or you're talking about Kyle? Him, him, him. Yeah. There's no blind. I really think is really on point this thing about betting smaller, especially because if I bet smaller, I will be able to fold after he, after he jams. But as I bet like one third and after he jams, like if you see it's really close, like the decision is like 2% profitable, my call pretty much because I, I have 25% average equity versus his hand, exact hand that is King Queen. Uh, and like I needed to have like 22, 23% to be profitable the call. So if I bet, like, for example, 20% pot, 
I would have I would have enough space to to still fold after he jams. But as I bet like one third, I I was pretty much committed, and it was pretty. I, I, it was so close decision between calling or folding. Like the V is really, uh, the, the difference is really small. The thing is, the solver is never folding your hand specifically because it considers a lot of bluffs that your opponent could have. Uh -huh, but yeah, in my yeah. opinion, in reality, you you're gonna find a very capped ring. It's a four bet pot, right? Like yeah. Well, I don't think, for example, I don't think he's calling with eights, nine, seven, sixes here. Never. People don't call for bets that wide. And I don't think he's going to jam. Like, he, I don't think he's going to raise with seven, six suited here or sevens as a bluff. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to have enough bluffs to justify the call. The solver is never going to, if you put here that he's jamming, the solver is not, not going to fold your hand because he has backdoor flush draw. So mm -hmm. ace five, even ace five of spades without backdoors. It's gonna call some of the time. I think a good exercise to, to check this would be, uh, let's put it, let's put your hand exactly here. This is another great poker tool and it's free in case you guys wanna use it. You go to Pro Poker Tool Simulations and then you can put down the range that the opponent has and then you can see how much is the average equity of your hands against that particular range. This is what I, I wanna know uh, about you, right? What is, when he jams, what is the range that you think he has here? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put kings that he's low play free. That I think the frequency is gonna be like thirty percent of the kings, maybe. Uh, king queen that he has ace queen. Ace king queen, 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 king queen off suited or only suited? I think all suited. I think off suited he's gonna fold pre flop. Okay. Uh, Let me just see if it's. Jax, maybe, maybe Jax, he does that. I, I, I would put Jax. Tens as well or no? I would put some tens. Okay. I, I, I think that's... I think ace-queen as well. Yeah, I said it. I said it, ace-queen. Oh, I said sorry. It. Ace-queen, I'm going to put ace suit and put... off suit. He has queens in his range too. Queens. Yeah, queens, of course. Yeah. He has queens. His range. Forgetting about queens. So that's the range that you're giving him, basically? His value hands, yeah. <laughs> His bluff hands, I don't think he has many. Let's put it, just for the sake of it, let's put it 7-6 suited. Even if you think he's never bluffing, let's put like four comes of bluff that is basically 7-6 suited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 88% uh, is like break even. With yeah. How much I would call and how much I needed to have uh, on equity for the call to be profitable. That's almost exactly what I needed, you know? Yeah, but, the, but and then it comes a personal opinion of mine. Like, it's, you're going to find more often than not, you're going you're gonna to assume people are going to have way more hands than they should in these spots when they are going to be very capped for value. And this is just, we are just as assuming what he's doing. We're never going to know for sure, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think, at least me, in this spot, that if you have an EV, the EV is very marginal. I prefer to fold because if you have a positive EV, it's going to be very marginal, right? Mm -hmm. But the problem is you're going to have a lot of variance in it. You're going to have a lot of variance in in, in a spot that it is, has very marginal EV. It's 329 more. It was 329 more. After I see bad 165, it was 329 more. That's the let thing. Me, let me do the thing. Here. Like I said, I think it's a very marginal call when you do a call. And if you start taking out hands that, let's say he's always five betting jam kings here, right? Kings and aces. Let's take them out. And, and since it's a four bet pot, did he... Let's let's take out the jacks and tens. Let's say that he doesn't do that with jacks and tens, right? Mm -hmm. But he still have uh, that seven six suited. Your equity is like very shallow. You see that it's like no matter how many hands you put here, you're gonna have to put a lot of bluffs to achieve that twenty nine percent. And this uh -huh. is assuming that we know his strategy, right? Mm -hmm. So it, in my opinion, it was great to see that my four betting range should have more blockers instead of like putting ace five, ace four, ace three, deuce, I, I should put like something like ace queen, uh, ace jack, like you showed, ace queen offs, ace jack. Like it was great to, to know that 
Still, I think against Kyle, like he would fold a lot of things that he threw bad. In, like, let's say, what man? I I don't know what he does. What does he do with eights, nines? I really don't, I, I I think he's gonna like mix it up between calling and three batting. Like yeah, but was, I don't think but I don't think he's jamming those after you see that. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally, totally. I, I'm talking about uh, the merit on four batting ace five. Like still against him, I think has some merit, but definitely if I after knowing that, I would have a way better idea of what should I be for betting here. I think I think I think it, at least for me the the most important part is live poker is so easy like you have so many easy spots that you can let it go of these very marginal ones like four betting pots by themselves are are going to have a lot a lot of variance so and when you go to a four bet pot that has a lot of variance by itself and you got to get that like very close EV there's going to be marginal right like this is like Margin, if you like 5% EV in a 1K pot, is, is going to be like a $50 loss, EV mm -hmm. loss, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's, I think it's not worth it because it's going to have a lot of variance. And uh, especially for live poker, since you don't play as many hands, it's going to affect uh, your mind, you know? It's not, it's not good for your mind taking these very close spots. Uh, when, let's say... How many pots over 200 blinds do you see in live poker per day, right? Sometimes none. And, and there's the, there's one thing that I'm putting into account lately that like when you put yourself in a big pot, there is a there is the the negative part as well that if you lose, sometimes when I'm losing, I just decide to stop playing. And yeah. when I don't lose the big pot, I would keep playing and our hourly has a value. Like the more we play, the more we're going to win. Like there's going to be various But through the long run, if I play 600 hours total or 700 hours total, the difference between those 100 hours is a lot of is a lot of money. So that's that's something that I'm really I'm really starting to think about that when I put myself in a hand. Also, like the bad part of if I lose a huge pot here, there is a chance I'm going to just say, no, I'm going to stop playing today. And by, let's say, two hours in average that I play last two hours. But put those last two hours like 40 times in a year. That's 80 hours less that I'm not playing that I should have played if I don't if I didn't put myself in those situations. I really see that after after studying this hand, like I can really see uh I'm way more I have way more knowledge about my four betting range against two people and my four betting range against one people that is different because of blockers, as we saw here. Yeah, I, I, th I think I think also one important take is uh, taking consideration that those mistakes, those it's not even mistakes because it's, it's stuff that you can do at a low frequency. It's just that the EV of doing is so close that I don't think it's worth it by the variance that it has in it. You know, interesting. Yeah, or live poker at least. Yeah. So guys, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this this study. Uh, let me know if you want me to do more of that. Uh, I would love to do that, like improve with you guys, study with you guys. You guys would be able to see uh, how we poker players, cash game poker players study and try to improve. Uh, make sure to check Pedro Hugo channel. Uh, he's doing a great job. He has two vlogs uh, so far, but I know he's going to do at least weekly and check it out. And I hope you guys enjoy. Okay. See you later. All right. I buy him for 400 more. After a couple minutes, I decided it's enough for today. Already got a great footage. Lost $464 in 3 hours and 44 minutes of session. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this content helped you understanding better how to use solvers, how to four bet in a multi way pot as I did. Uh, definitely, poker is a game that you can always improve. Like, no matter your level, you can always find a way to improve your game. And if you want me to do more contents like this, like using solvers, using uh, other tools from poker, that there are many tools, the solver is not the only one, let me know. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it and see you next time.